Are you interested in learning what one of my favorite stacks happens to be? If you're looking for ways to maximize your time and investment and really stack a few of the most potent therapies to get a really fast impact, then this video is for you. For me, I'm always looking for ways to maximize my time, my energy, my effort, and the dollars I spend on being the most effective I can be when I'm looking for solutions of improving my health. One of my favorite stacks is absolutely combining methylene blue, red light, and hyperbaric oxygen. Why is it one of my favorites and what does it do in our body? Let's get into some of the details. So methylene blue has a myriad of benefits, some of which include improved mitochondrial function, so it literally helps in the redox reactions or the reduction and oxidation reactions inside of our mitochondria, which are all used to help our cells produce the energy that they need. Methylene blue also happens to be very antimicrobial, so it happens to help kill different bacteria, viruses, parasites, mold, and so it has a lot of power in boosting our immune system. So methylene blue has a ton of different benefits, those only being a few of them. So that's the blue. Red light, and we've done some videos on red light, but we know that red light has a lot of different benefits inside of our body, including improved circulation, including vasodilation of our blood vessels. But where it stands out here is specifically that it improves a portion of the electron transport chain inside the mitochondria. We know that cytochrome C, which is an electron carrier inside the electron transport chain, is very stimulated by certain frequencies of red light. So methylene blue is adding a lot of energy density to the early stages of the electron transport chain and helping to perpetuate the redox reactions required for energy production. Red light is stimulating cytochrome C, allowing it to carry electrons down that electron transport chain. And then, of course, there's oxygen, O2. And oxygen is the main rate-limiting step to energy production. So in order for all those electrons to move down the electron transport chain and then be removed so that new molecules can enter the process, oxygen needs to be present in order to be the final electron acceptor and allow energy production to continue to be cyclical. So these three alone, methylene blue, red light therapy, and oxygen, play an enormous role in the ability to make cellular energy. At the end of the day, in so many cases of chronic illness or in bio-optimization and performance in general, the ability of our cells to make energy is the fuel that we need for our body and our cells to do all the different jobs that they need to do. And these are three very simple ways to stimulate that process and move the ball downfield, allowing our cells to make the energy that they really need to make. While I was at an event at Advanced Rejuvenation in Sarasota, Dr. John Lawrence and I, along with Brian Richards, the owner and developer of Sauna Space, the three of us got together and just started talking about what each of these different modalities did individually and ultimately what they do together. And so what came from that conversation between myself, Dr. Lawrence, and Brian Richards was the red, blue, and O2 protocol. And it's really just about combining those things. Now, can you do methylene blue alone? Of course you can, and I do all the time. Can you do red light alone? Of course you can, and also I do that regularly. Can you do hyperbaric or other oxygen modalities separately? Of course you can, and there's great benefit to all three. However, there are certain days where you want a major mitochondrial jumpstart. Well, wow, you can really combine them to get the synergy of all three. A very simple strategy for combining these is just to make sure that you take methylene blue on whatever day you're planning on stacking these. Now, it doesn't have to be right before. It could be at least an hour or more before giving methylene blue a chance to be digested and into your system. And then you really do want to combine the red light and the oxygen relatively close together. And so you could do you know, 15 to 30 minutes of red light exposure, depending on what you're trying to get out of the red light, how intense the red light you are using is. You want to be able to maximize the benefit of the red light. But again, because it's in synergy, you don't have to maximize that singular dose. You just want to get a healthy amount of red light exposure. You want to vasodilate. You want to upregulate cytochrome C, which is inside that mitochondria. And you're setting the stage for this improved mitochondrial function. And then from the red light, almost immediately or as close to it as you can, you want to get exposed to the hyperbaric. And so what you've done here is you've loaded up the mitochondrial front end by delivering the raw materials that methylene blue is able to deliver. 
you've increased blood flow and you've stimulated cytochrome C, and now you're putting in that last ingredient of oxygen, which is that final electron acceptor, helping to stimulate the entire electron transport chain, really maximizing the mitochondria's ability to make energy. I want to bring up one other point, which is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide in some circles has this reputation of being this magical chemical that's in charge of stimulating all these different health-related pathways. In other circles, nitric oxide doesn't have as good of a reputation because it's also known to stimulate certain inflammatory pathways that are known to cause a lot of different health issues. The reality is this, and it's a much bigger conversation than just this video, there's different types of nitric oxide. There's INOS, ENOS, and NNOS. And each one of those plays very different roles inside our physiology. The important thing to know is this. INOS has the inflammatory cascade that we're trying to avoid. ENOS has a lot of benefits of that vasodilation and increased blood flow I was talking about. And NNOS has a capacity to improve neuron function, synapse connection, and some neurogenesis capacity. So we want ENOS, we want NNOS, but we certainly also want to reduce INOS. So taking nitric oxide stimulators just haphazardly could increase all the nitric oxide variants and could increase INOS causing inflammatory cascades. So we don't necessarily want to do that. But we also don't need to be afraid of the fact that, as an example, red light therapy does enhance ENOS. Hyperbaric also enhances ENOS and NNOS. And methylene blue happens to also balance all the nitric oxides by helping to reduce INOS while not reducing ENOS and NNOS. And so again, from a nitric oxide balancing standpoint, this is a beautiful combination of therapies that could really help get all the benefits of nitric oxide we're looking for, while also suppressing some of the consequences of nitric oxide that we're not wanting. We've introduced methylene blue a few times in a couple other videos. We haven't done a video all on methylene blue alone yet, though it's coming. But if you do want more information on methylene blue, you can check out Dr. John Lawrence's book, Methylene Blue, The Magic Bullet. He and I also collaborated on a few of the chapters. So we've added a whole bunch of the content of the combined effect of methylene blue and red light and oxygen in a lot more detail than the conversation we just had. So if that's of interest, please check out that book and we'll put a link in the description if you wanna order it. So what do you say? Give it a try, red, blue, and O2. Take your methylene blue in the morning, wait an hour or two to let it get going, jump in your red light, go to the hyperbaric, and give this protocol a try. After you do a few rounds, why don't you leave us a few comments and let us know how it felt. See you next time.